Hello everyone, um, we are doing a live video today with Ignacio uh, who will be joining us very shortly um, to, oh, here's Ignacio. See if I can uh, have them. Oh, hi there. Hey, it took me a minute. <laughs> me too. Every, every I feel like every time I come to Instagram, she has moved. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, wait a minute. I was waiting for it to pop up to say the Heal Project has gone live, and nothing went up. So uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah it, it's a little slow. Well, um, yeah, I was just saying that uh, today we're going to be starting hopefully one of many uh, live videos on Instagram to um, kind of get to let you get to know us and also get to know you because uh, we've been doing a lot of works kind of, you know, with the post and the videos, but uh, we haven't had a chance quite to introduce ourselves. Um, and also... Secondary to that is, uh, I think, April, everybody, most people, I think, who are following us, our followers, know that it's uh, the Sexual Assault Awareness Month, uh, SAM, mm -hmm. and also April is sexual, Child Sexual Abuse uh, Prevention Month or Child Sexual Abuse Month. So um, we are always busy in April trying to bring awareness to CSA, and I, we thought this would be a great opportunity to um, uh, get on live and mm -hmm. talk to y'all yeah and i um i want to add to that that um at the heal project we try to model the things that um we believe in the world like within our structure so part of that is relationship building which is a huge piece of uh many moving parts in the world right now um really getting back to what it means to connect with other people um what it means to have an accountability process, how to communicate properly, how to just how to be um, in community and in solidarity. And so when we um, do projects with other people, when we meet other folks that are interested in our work, we really start a process of getting to know uh, people. We really try to like get out of this like capitalist model of fast, 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 quick, 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 let's get as much done as possible with as many people. And the funding world, you know, really does support that kind of fast, fast, fast kind of thing. So we're trying to be uh, a little different as a lot of people are and um, figuring since we put out the work, you know, maybe it's time for you to, to get to know us as, a, as the Heal Project unit. Like, who are we and what do we stand for, you know, behind the Heal Project logo? Yes, exactly. And I also want to let folks know that unfortunately, we still haven't been able to figure out how to add auto generated yeah. captions uh, for Instagram for our live videos. But uh, after this video, we will be publishing in our IGTV uh, a, a video that has closed captions. Yeah. So uh, and also on our YouTube channel. So in case anyone uh, would like to come back for the same video with closed captions in a little bit later today, that will be available. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, as Ignacio said, uh, it, this has been a while that we wanted to come on and talk to you folks um, and just um, introduce ourselves and how did we come to this point of uh, feeling uh, the way uh, we talk about the work, our work at the Heal Project is that it is work. I don't want to like go into a notion mm -hmm. of like, oh, you know, work and life is all the same. We love what we do. Right. But I, I, I love what I do, but there's also having to mold that into capitalistic structures right yeah, so there is yeah. there is all of that um but yeah i guess uh first of all i want ignacio if you just could give us a more of a brief history but we will be going deeper into like all the amazing work that you've done over the decades um but what would be like a brief history of how you came to found the hill project mm, okay uh brief history so the hill pro the idea of the hill project happened uh, probably 15 years ago or so. Um, yeah, probably around that. Uh, I'm so horrible with time, 10, 15 years ago, more than a decade, let's say. Uh, uh, and it was around the time where I was trying to express uh, my 
depression, anger, PTSD, uh, survivorship um, through poetry and words. And one day decided that I wanted to do, a, at the time, a one-woman show, um, really chronicling that story and telling my story, but also the generations of women in my household and uh, how I came to start this journey of, of, of you know, healing. And through the HEAL project, uh, when I started it, HEAL stands for Hidden Encounters, Altered Lives. And that's, that was the, the onset of that, um, and very specific to uh, sexual abuse by um, female to female. It's something that really wasn't talked about at the time. Um, I think it's talked about a little more, but really not that much. And so I needed to find, I needed to tell my story, and I needed to find other people uh, that um, understood. Uh, and so I did this show for, I traveled with it for about four years. It was like four years of deep therapy. And um, in that, through that show, I met a lot of people who disclosed to me for the first time in their lives. Um, it was really deep work. And like, I call it like vessel work. I held a lot for people. And I was so proud and privileged to do that, you know. Um, but I realized that people weren't ready to talk about it. People told me in secret. They wrote in my book. They said, I'm not telling anyone, I haven't told anyone, but. And so um, through, through that, I just started asking myself a lot of questions through the show and what is the connecting factor here? What is the thing that I've been struggling with for so long? Why is this still such a huge issue? Why are people not talking about it? And even within my own family, you know, sometimes you hear something happening, people whisper about it, but nobody's doing anything. So I kept asking myself these questions and the thing that kept popping up for me was how I felt in my own body, my, my sex and how I connected to other people. I had no idea who I was, where my boundaries began, where they ended. I didn't know if my body belonged to other people or me. I, I didn't know any of that. So I navigated stuff really shittily for a really long time. And thinking about that, I was like, um, uh, what is sex? What is intimacy? What is, what is it that I actually want? But thinking about it as an adult, as a survivor, and then working through that, but then I took it another step and was like, wait a minute, but it's about when, why didn't I learn about this when I was younger? Why didn't we talk about this? Why didn't I know about my body? Why didn't I know about anything, you know? And so it wasn't like a blame thing about parents. It was more so about this culture, the, our culture, sometimes our religion, our upbringing, where we live, where all of these things just are compounded on this fear and shame about sex. So the fear and shame we feel about sex, it goes into the fear and shame that kids feel when this is perpetrated onto them. And then we carry that for the rest of our lives, like wondering about our bodies, our sex, our intimacy, connection, uh, uh, safety even, you know? And then we're supposed to figure it out as adults. So most times we're, we're survivors as adults. Or, or even beginning the process of survivorship as adults, because that's when we're starting to get that connection. We're like, oh, my upbringing, the relationships, my friendships. Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck. Yes, it's all connected. And so the Heal Project to me was about talking about the thing that I think a lot of us already know, but we're too afraid to talk about. And it is sexual liberation in a, in a broad context, sexual liberation of children, sexual liberation of survivors, sexual liberation of people of color, of people with disabilities, of elders, sexual liberation, meaning fuck government control of our bodies and we get to dictate our bodies, our agency, our passion, our desire, medical, whatever the hell it is, right? And so um, really, uh, it, to me, it's like that cir circular thing. It's like, we're healing um, the wounds of, you know, of survivorship, but we're doing it through a sexual liberation lens that connects back to our family of origin and all, all humans uh, and how we connect. Um, and um, really pushing the envelope. I, I'm really here I'm wanting to push the envelope on why childhood sexual abuse continues to be the, the, the epidemic, pandemic that it is um, and continues to be the most uh, silenced uh, movement in our movements.
So that, that's the passion oh, for the Hill <laughs> Project for me, passion, that this is what we need to be doing. <laughs> Yes, Ignacio, you know, I've known you for over five years now. And still, every time you speak, I get chills, I get goosebumps. <laughs> so uh, that, thank you so much. Uh, yes, that's pretty much a, a brief uh, history of, <laughs> of the work we do. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, actually, I'm Ignacio, I like, I think a lot of people's experience of you. Uh, we fall in love with you before we even know you and meet you. Uh, so... <laughs> I remember for the first time I heard you speak at a conference in Massachusetts um, and you were at like the final panel of this really great conference that was very much around sexual liberation, very great ideals, but dominated with white people. Um, and, you know, me being there as an immigrant of color and really, you know, and also somebody who can navigate white spaces uh, mm -hmm. fairly, you know, safely, relatively safely. Uh, so here I am sitting, you're at this panel at the very end of this conference talking about race and uh, talking about basically why aren't there more people of color in spaces like this that are meant to be, you know, uh, for sexual liberation and mm -hmm. for um, this, this freedom of sexual expression. Where are people of color in that space? And uh, I love, I just love, I still remember everything you said in that <laughs> panel, which was that, so the panel is called like inclu inclusion or diversity oh, or something. My favorite and word. <laughs> right. I know. <laughs> inclusion. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you were just you know uh fuck inclusion inclusion by itself what it implies is that uh here we are we we have the privilege and the resources we created a thing it works for us now here you're welcome to come right. join us exactly. and um and that spoke to me so much right it completely shifted my own uh mindset around how we think about again this is a conference about sex and we're talking right. about, you know, race and how interconnected these issues are and how deeply important it is, uh, especially for marginalized people to claim their sexual liberation in radical ways, because for sure, nobody's handing that to us. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. But tell us about you, Red Bean. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I guess the brief version of me will be... Um, I um, so I, I'm an immigrant. I grew up in Iran and I came here um, when I was 18. So I've been in this country my entire adult life. And pretty much right after college, I started becoming really interested in sexuality education. Um, and from the beginning, I always remember in my training, the two things that were important brought up is that oftentimes we think about the world of sexuality professionals as uh you know it's all this glitter and orgasms and vibrators yeah. and and all of this you know just joy and moaning all the time um and on the <laughs> other side of the spectrum is this like really uh kind of sad bubble of sexual violence and mm -hmm. sexual assault and child sexual abuse and all the things around sex that like a lot of people don't want to touch it don't want to talk about it so um when i came across your work uh some years after that uh what i really absolutely enjoyed about the framework you created is that you put the two together you were like oh actually to address sexual violence we need to be looking at sexual liberation Mm -hmm. Right. Sexual violence happened because we are not sexually liberated. Exactly. And, and sexual liberation is is the moaning and the orgasms and the joy and the glitter. But it's also about claiming our body and whatever the fuck we want to do with our body. It's about body liberation. Yeah. Right. And, yes. and sexual violence happens because body liberation, both for victims and harm doers and survivors and all everybody. I'm talking about sexual liberation of yeah. everybody here. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so it really spoke to me. And like prior to that, I had done a lot of work around sexual assault uh, and rape for for adult survivors or people who had experienced sexual violence as adults. Um, but the connection that you made with like, oh, actually, a lot of adult survivors first experience sexual violence as children, mm -hmm. right? And also a lot of adult survivors, a lot of adult victims 
get the ideas or like get like they don't get the education they need basically right. to be able to navigate the world of sex as an adult when they were children so these are all connected yeah. right it's like if we lived in a different world where people were actually given the tools they needed as children as the very first skills they they learn then that can actually really reduce a survivorship and having to experience sexual violence in childhood and in adulthood right mm -hmm. yes. um so yes absolutely I, i fell in love with that made a lot of sense to me mm -hmm. and with that also the lens of bringing in we will not have sexual liberation we will not have body liberation until the most marginalized of us has it exactly. right and that's the key when we say sexual liberation we do not mean you know let's sit around in a circle and come together and that's wonderful yes. do it if you want <laughs> be after maybe after vaccination do yeah. it if you want but <laughs> but you know sexual liberation to me is like the day we have racial liberation is the yes. day we have this uh, disability justice is the day we have uh, police and prison uh, abolition it's it's all of that that's the day we have sexual liberation and that's the world where we're going to see sexual violence not be the pandemic that it is mm -hmm. and the way we frame um sexual liberation is that we need to have a huge cultural shift in how we even think about sex and that that means that uh, learning about sex gender sexuality relationships is part of a life skill that basically when a kid is born that kid we already know that that kid needs to learn the life skill of their journey through sexual liberation which means learning how to fucking be a friend how to make an apology how to have empathy how to um come to decisions how to question right how to do all of the things all of the tiny little things that actually make it possible for someone to connect with another human being and be able to to understand their own boundaries and where they begin and somebody ends right those are the things that none of us really really have right and i often think about um media and this is why we use media so much um in the hill project we love using media because we're surrounded by media right <laughs> we are online constantly we're watching movies and you know netflix hulu all of that and we uh are inundated by fantasy whether it's reality tv or sitcom it's all fantasy um uh, if you really 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 sit down and watch how families function in sitcoms it's it's all fantasy it's a lie it does it's not how real families function right but when you watch this and it, it's something that kind of gets into your subconscious and you think this is how things are this is how people talk to each other this is how things work out and it's not true it's it's we don't really know how we actually function <laughs> with one another because we've get we're getting all of these messaging on how it's supposed to be and we've gotten this all along about who's the perfect family who's acceptable in society right we get those all the time and so it's up to us and, and so we use media we take media we have a project called connecting dots where we take a documentary a book a movie a commercial a billboard anything that's a piece of media and examine it and then um see how that piece of media everyday piece of media connects to the prevention of CSA and or teaching sexual liberation and i guarantee you there's a connection there's always a connection right and so uh using everyday media that people watch all the time we can say hey you can you can enjoy this but look at this angle look at this angle check this angle out right and so we can start a different kind of a dialogue right? yes exactly and that's uh was actually really eye opening for me is that you know we get subliminal messages from media all the time and there is always this outward pressure like just yesterday i think i was telling you ignacio how i found myself in a situation where i was like trying to justify why uh, my queerness like oh, yeah. explain explain my queerness right after all of these years i'm sitting <laughs> like i'm trying to like explain how i why i think i became i was you know in what trajectory of life has brought me to queerness and i was like what am i doing why is it that i am still stuck in this cycle of having to justify my existence justify my desires justify even yeah. my choices you know i've always said like 
we don't have to con- constantly explain ourselves. Like, this is how I was born and this is who I am. And no, this is what I choose and respect mm-hmm. me. Right. I don't care. Like, you know, people choose religions and we think we should respect them or whatever right. ideology, you know. So, so it's like getting understanding that we are always having this external pressure to, like you were saying, these create these fantasies of how relationships form, mm-hmm. how sex happens, how relationships happen. Um, and, and a lot of people feel like they are, there's something wrong with them because yeah. they can't get that fantasy and implement it into the reality of their lives. Yeah. Right. And, and then there is that secrecy around, well, you know, or you feel bad about how things are going right. for you. Don't tell anyone because then exactly. you'll be mocked, right? Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. like we have created these like secret um, kind of th- these secrets around how relationships form, right? Yeah. And, and yet, as soon as you start breaking that secret, you see people come forward, share stuff. Yes. Like you were saying, people like there's so many, whatever, here is the one thing I've learned over the years. Whatever you think you're experiencing and you think it's unique to you, it's not. Yeah. This is yeah. this is my golden rule. It's like whatever yeah. I think, however shitty I think, however unique I think my experiences are, it is not. It is it is part of a system. It is right. it is something other people are going through. And that's yeah. why speaking out about it and um yes. just breaking the secret, right? Mm-hmm. Uh is so important when yeah. you're doing this work. Breaking the secrecy and the shame. Yes, breaking the secrecy and the shame. Um because it's the same kind of thing when we talk about domestic violence. When we talk, all of it, all of it. We we did a, a a panel on relationships and how relationships are so beautiful and lovey, and then we get into a cycle of what? Only seeing that person, nobody knows what's going on. Then problems happen. Oh, I haven't talked to my friend in a while about it. I'm not going to share it. We get more more isolated, isolated. We and we are in those systems that create, you know, like help foster that secrecy and shame. And so that's what we was like, bust out of that shit. <laughs> we need to bust right. out of that shit. And that really starts at, um, in our families of origin. You know, that's, if we want to begin it, it starts there. But it's never too late to um, do this work. Never too late to do this work. And we do this work uh, through a lot of different programming. And um, I think when we come back, we're going to be talking about a lot of specific points that we want to share with you all and our journey working through the heal project yes absolutely so we're got, we're excited to be making uh coming on live making more of these videos and some of what's coming is going into the specifics of how different movements for liberation are connected to ending child sexual abuse uh talking about the reality of how challenging it is to get some of the mainstream narratives around ending sexual violence yes. um even interested in realizing that child sexual abuse is part of this larger movement. Like right yeah. now, child sexual abuse just lives in this bubble in the corner by itself. Right. And it still is looked at as like something that happens in childhood. And, you know, children forget about it. They grow up, it's over. And then we don't need to really, you know, go over it very much. You know, let's mm. focus on workplace harassment. Let's focus on domestic violence as adults in relationships. And it's like, these are all so connected. We yes. cannot break this. So we would love to bring these connections to you the way we see it. Mm-hmm. Um, then also talk about some of the challenges of like the reality of getting funding yes. for this work. <laughs> we, we have some stories of just, you know, go, trying to uh, interest the philanthropy world in in, in the kind of work that we do, which is so radical in a way, radical as in like looking at the root causes right. of why CSA happens. And it turns out philanthropy is not so interested in root causes mm-hmm. from our experience. So <laughs> we will be <laughs> talking more about that. And also I, I'm excited to talk about our, our dreams and our ideas. We yes. Part of what I love about the work we do is that we're always envisioning the kind of world we want to live in. Yes. And what would that look like? How would things be different how can we get there what kind of projects and ideas would there be uh and and that's a real fun part of work that i really enjoy being part of hill project for yeah that's definitely a part of our model visioning we dream a lot together dream a lot um but i do want to mention um the projects that we have going on right now if just Mm -hmm. in case you don't know about it please check it out and we would love some feedback we love to hear from people. Um, we love for you to be a part of our campaigns that are out there. So uh, we, um, we had a program called um, 
um, Pure Love Talks, which um, went for two seasons. And I did that with my adult daughter talking about how families and adults can talk to young people about sex and sexuality. It's a lot of fun episodes there. My grandson makes a couple of cameos in that one, right? <laughs> What else do we have, Red Beam? Uh, one that I'm really excited about is the Sexual Liberation Campaign. Yes. And um, uh, you may have seen our post. Uh, we are both accepting definitions of sexual liberation, as well as stories, moments, true or fictional stories of what does sexual liberation mean to you. And this one is really important, I think, because we do want to really dismantle the idea that sexual liberation belongs to the few privileged right. and actually get to define it for ourselves. And it could look like anything, right? Like we talked about sexual liberation isn't just like about the sex you had. It could be a moment you had a revelation about your relationships, about your friendships, something that you learned about your body, mm -hmm. uh, something you learned about sex. It doesn't, yeah. any of those stories, any of those connections are very welcome for the sexual liberation campaign. And Sexual liberation could also be the day you realize that you were asexual. Mm -hmm. That's sexual liberation, right? You don't have to have had sex to, to be on a sexual liberation path. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for that. Mm -hmm. And then I love, love, love our new program, Caution Unrestricted. If you have not checked out Caution Unrestricted, please do. I love this new program, and it's one of our biggest programs. Uh, we are putting out one season at a time, and we put out our first season, uh, and the first season is called Bad Survivors. We put out, what is it, five? Five episodes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, five yep. episodes, Bad Survivor. And it is a, a new program that is, uh, you know, for survivors, by survivors, talking the ways that we want to talk, right? You know, how many survivors out there that we get to talk to people, thank goodness that they're loving and they're supporting us, but it's hard sometimes to talk to people who don't get it, who have not experienced it, right? Um, sometimes we have survivor humor, right? Sometimes we want to say, fuck it all to hell. We want to be able to say that. We want to be able to talk about suicidal ideation and not scare the shit out of the people who love us, right? So we want to talk about the real hard shit and, and, and like have you join in on it, in on it and give your like thoughts and um, you know just your your stories uh, because we again we want to go to that place of breaking down this idea right and so in breaking that down is like one true way of doing that is storytelling is sharing our truths right yeah so caution and restricted our next one we're going to be working on it soon and that uh, one season two is going to be called our nasty bits. So that one's going to be good. <laughs> you want to say a little bit more about what our nasty bits are? <laughs> I, think, I think it says it all there, nasty bits. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. And I think that's, that's our nasty bits goes to the piece about body liberation, right? Mm -hmm. It's like not only, not only our genitals, not only the parts that are deemed like typically fetishized and sexy, but also it's like the hair, the body hair. Like we think about our nasty bits, right? Yeah, you know, the, yeah. the things that we, we look at and we're like, oh my gosh, you know, this makes me nasty subconscious right. thoughts right so that's gonna be exciting caution is our new baby i'm very excited mm -hmm. for it yes. <laughs> and uh yeah i can't wait to um to get your feedback if you get to watch the episodes they are going they're all on igtv our channel and also on youtube so do go through them do read the trigger guide before you start watching them because like ignacio said uh there is a lot of um realness and a lot of truth telling in these uh, episodes yeah, so the, the trigger um, um, document that was created, um, I'm really happy with that. Just like how it tells you that, you know, take it easy. Don't watch it all at once. Understand that it can be very triggering. Um, uh, it was triggering for us, you know, and we did it. You know, like I watched it, you know, one after the other. And I was like, oh, no, never. I will never do that again. I will watch one at a time because... Even though I watched it afterwards, I just thought about it and it just seeped in. And I was like, fuck, that was really powerful. That was intense, you know, and the stories that people shared. So, you know, it's like sometimes it takes a minute for it to get in there. So just be kind to yourselves when you watch it. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I'll give heads up about uh this is like a mini program, but at the Heal Project because we are so dedicated to practicing the kind of values that we advocate for, the values that we think actually will end sexual violence against children and everyone. Um we have uh, started uh skill share meetings. Uh, mm-hmm. This is our internal staff meetings where all of us share um a, on a subject, uh we do our work our reading and then present a short presentation to the group and then we have a conversation about it so uh we just had our first meeting we talked about uh burnout perfectionism and conflict resolution mm-hmm. uh and these are just like r- bits of information that uh, can get folks th- thinking about it we will be putting out the first one soon um so yeah be on the lookout for it yeah yeah well thank you all everyone for listening and we look forward to having some more videos so we can get to you can get to know us and you can get to ask us questions um and be in community yeah absolutely have a great one everyone thanks everyone goodbye bye